big deal. I will say that this presentation is going to cover sort of two parts. One part I'm super happy about, and that is just VoiceThread itself. The second part, I'm going to be looking into some solutions as we move through, and that is using VoiceThread with Canvas. It's a little bit clunky using VoiceThread in Canvas, and that could be that I'm just new to it. And so that's kind of actually a useful thing is that I'm not new to VoiceThread. I've been using it for about 10 years, but I am newer to using VoiceThread within Canvas because I've never had a school pay for it to be in Canvas, which is how it has to work. So I, you know, I actually have my pay for VoiceThread, which costs about $100 a year. And out of the tools that I use, it's one that I use the most regularly. So I just wanted to share that with you. And I've seen all sorts of tools, like they pedal push them to, to you consistently, but this is one of my favorites. Okay, so I do want to give you a quick overview that what VoiceThread is in a nutshell is that it is a sl interactive slideshow. And within the slides, you can have a video and it's where you have the slides and then students and teachers can respond to those slides. You could also use it as a lecture uh, sort of tool, which I use that a lot as well. What I like about using VoiceThread as a lecture tool is that there's only a small chunk at a time. So if students don't understand something, they can just re-listen to that one slide. And in fact, today I was wanting to go back to the VoiceThread video, which you're going to have access to. And it's, I will tell you right away, it's quite boring, but it's important, but it's, I think six to eight minutes long. And I'm, I, I just need the little part, <laughs> just a little part. And so it, it makes you hesitate to go back. And that's like students, they don't wanna go back if it's too difficult. So it, it's basically an interactive slideshow and where students can communicate with one another. So we have more than one workshop date. And if you were in the Camtasia session, you might've heard me ask, hey, when are we meeting again? But it was a single workshop date, but we have multiple. And I spoke with Chad about it because I think that it's really important. If you, I already introduced VoiceThread actually in the spring, I, there was a pro tip session on it. But I, this is more about really using it, practicing it, and, and troubleshooting with it so that you can actually use the tool as opposed to saying, well, that was kind of cool, I'll get back to it. So we have a session this today, this Wednesday, we have a session next Wednesday, and then there's two weeks in between where I'm going to be asking you to showcase one of your voice threads with us. Um, and all of these will, sessions will be taped. It's going to be at the same time on those Wednesdays. It's going to be at 2 p.m. If you can't make one of the sessions, that will be okay. <clears throat> it's just, it's better when you're there because then you can ask questions, especially the ne next session. Because when you go to try to use voice thread, you're then going to realize what you don't know, the gaps of it. All right, so our VoiceThread workshop, <clears throat> in a nutshell, you're gonna learn how to use a VoiceThread. You're gonna think about how to use it pedagogically, and you're going to create VoiceThreads. So that's in a nutshell. There's lots of little individual items here, but I don't need to go over all of them, but you can take a look at them later. This particular slideshow is located in our voice thread canvas shell, which will be open for you indefinitely. The benefits of voice thread are many. Uh, it is equity minded, it's flexible, and it gives a really good asynchronous alternative. Students need to be taught how to communicate in mixed communication modes and consider their rhetorical choices. They can interact beyond the finite classroom. I've used VoiceThread in my face-to-face -face classes too. Not in quite the same way, but I use them both in face-to-face -face and uh, online classes. It, there's really positive interaction. And then, like I said, uh, excuse me, I'm on the wrong slide. Um, it also actually increases retention when students are able to interact with one another. 
And the difference between using VoiceThread and then just using a video aspect on a discussion forum, for example, on Canvas, is that it's based on a very specific slide. Students can leave a, just a very short little response and then it's a thread, so students can thread and respond back to a specific person. And it is, it is very intuitive. They can use it on their phone. They continue to improve that with VoiceThread. So I just like to remind you, just like with Canvas, it's a good idea to use VoiceThread with Google Chrome or Firefox. Sometimes it does glitch. When I was using it a couple of days ago, I moved from Google to Firefox, and that's when I was trying to use VoiceThread with Canvas. So that's something to think about as well. So I have a slide here, which I'm not going to read, but you can come back and take a look. And these are just the basics of what you're gonna do. And I'm gonna illustrate it to you as well. You're gonna create a PowerPoint or Google Slides, and you're gonna upload it, and you're gonna add any other visual links that you want, such as a video. You're gonna create your own comments, and then you will open it up to students. It's that easy. A voice thread can be something that takes a single slide, or you could do a voice thread that has <clears throat> 20 to 25 slides, you know, whatever you need for your particular class. So I wanna go out and I wanna take an opportunity to practice, okay? Let's see. And I'm gonna go here. I'm going to move us, in fact, I'll put us up here to begin with. <clears throat> and then I will move us elsewhere. Okay. All right. And it does use captions. All right, so I am at my Janet Mitchell Lambert.edu account here, but I also have my other account as well. And there are less, I have many, many voice threads. If you were to see on my other account, which was open just a little while ago, I go home and you'll see just a few voice threads there. I'm gonna hit create. And right here you have an opportunity to add media. And I've already created a Google Slideshow, but I often use PowerPoint as well. It's called Synthesis. So I'm going to copy it. And I'm sorry, Zoom always makes it slower. So I'm gonna copy the link. I'm gonna go to VoiceThread here. I'm gonna hit add media and you could click on my computer and you can add a um, PowerPoint. You can go to other media sources. All of these you can take a look at, webcam, video. I'm gonna hit URL and I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna paste it here. If it takes too long to upload, I will go and do something else. And you notice, oh, there's an error and it might be because we're on Zoom, but I would put in a title here, so I would put synthesis, and I'm fine with this. I knew this might happen on, on uh, Zoom within, uh, uh, excuse me, VoiceThread within Zoom. So I'm actually gonna go to a sample here and just open it up. Move us around here. Okay, so we have a sample voice thread here that's already done, and this is in our Canvas shell. But what it would look like if that entire slideshow was included is you would see all these slides here, okay? And you could even add more, you could add more media there, okay? And so the first thing you do is you add your media, you have your slides here, 
And notice you can actually edit each one of the slides. You can actually move slides around by dragging them, okay? You could add more media. A lot of times I find videos on YouTube that I wanna use or a video that I've created and I can add a video very easily. You can go to options, which is actually very important. And I will share with you that when I make a voice thread, this one's called sample because it's for you, but my particular voice threads that I make for myself, I always put down that they're called template and then whatever it's called, such as template, August Wilson Spence's voice thread. That way I can always just make a copy of that and use it for my classes. So I make it one time and I copy it each time that I wanna use it. So I'm gonna look at the playback settings here. And there are lots of things that you can decide that students will be able to use or not use, such as uh, threaded commenting, where somebody makes a comment and then somebody can respond right to them. I can allow others to download, which I've allowed you to do. If you have an issue with it, I can send you the link again, uh, allow others to make a copy. You can decide if you want to save whatever your choices are to a default, and then you hit save. Once you're done with creating your voice thread, and you're gonna see so many samples about what could be included in your voice thread. I have many, many samples. But once you're done with actually putting the slides up, which could be PowerPoint, so if you're already using PowerPoint, you could take your PowerPoint, which is what I did this last nine weeks. There were certain uh, PowerPoints or Google Slides that I used that I normally would give lectures on in my classroom, and I uploaded them to VoiceThread, and then I did my lecture there. So I'm going to go to comment here. And we're gonna see if you can hear me. If you can't, that's okay. Welcome. Oh, excuse me. Let's try this one to more To our time. voice thread on August Wilson's fences. What's particularly special about this voice thread is that you will see three videos of students performing scenes. Thank you. All right, was every, everybody was able to hear that? Can I see a thumbs up if you were? Or, uh, awesome, so you were able to hear that. So this is just an opening slide. If I'm, sometimes I create a single slide. In fact, I'll show that to you in just a moment. Other times I have several slides. If I'm having, if I'm using several slides, I start off with a purpose and a task. I go and then I tell students what it is I would like them to do. And so it says for each of the slides, follow along and see the student made YouTube videos. I did not put the YouTube videos here. I actually put them just directly on a Google page and put it onto Canvas. That way I don't have to keep remaking the voice thread. And I just had students keep open two tabs, which was very easy to do. So let's say that I want to respond, I can respond back to the person here, or I can hit comment below. And what's nice about the comments is that you can do a text response, an audio, or a video. And you can upload, but you know most people don't tend to upload. Most people tend to do either the audio or video because that's what I encourage them to do. I won't be able to do those here, but I can do a little ABC comment here and I can type something in. I can cancel it or save it. I'm just gonna save it as an example. And then you see how I've responded to the person. Now I can decide that I'm gonna respond to this human here and I can do my response and then it shows as a circle here. So it's res a response directly back to the person who responded. So it's, it's threading just like you would see in a YooHoo 
a Yahoo article that you've read where, you know, at the bottom there's the comments and then somebody makes a comment, somebody gets upset and then they comment back and there's like 12 or 13 of, or 100 comments back to that single comment. That's exactly what you can do here. And the reason why I make a template, just so you know, is that I will go in and I will make comments back to students periodically here and there. I don't do a ton of comments. I just try to do enough to get the conversation going. So we have our different slides with examples here. And I will showcase with you that you can request closed captioning. And up here, there's a place for you to request the captions. Mine is already captioned, so it's not gonna request, but I can also edit the captions. And you might notice that in the captions, just like if you saw in Camtasia and YouTube and anything else, you have to fix the captions for the capitals and punctuation, that kind of thing. And you can save the captions very easily. But so I respond and I don't wanna save my comments to other students, so that's why I make templates. I make templates of Google's, Google, uh, editable Google Docs as well, so that I don't have to go back. So there's also, so there's that there as well. So once you're done, you can share it. Now, how we're gonna do it in Canvas is a little bit different, but if you decided that you're gonna share it to multiple classes, you could get a link, copy the link, and you're gonna decide whether they're gonna view or comment. For my lecture-based uh, voice threads, I only allow students to view. And like I said, this is one of my very favorite ways to lecture is to use VoiceThread. I make videos when I'm introducing material. I might make a podcast if I wanna read a chapter to them or part of a textbook. But when I wanna lecture, I really like VoiceThread, again, because I want students just to be able to go back and listen to one particular part if they want to and not have to listen to the whole thing and then decide that they're gonna quit say forget it because I don't want to go through something so long. All right, so I am going to go back to here. Move us again. All right, so when you're doing voice thread, some of the considerations to make are as follows. What do you want to use VoiceThread for? Do you want to use it for a check-in, right? Maybe, in fact, I created one. If you were in the last session, Colleen made one after the pandemic started. And I did a check-in for like the mid-semester to see how students were doing. And I have that on our Canvas shell, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. Do you want it to introduce a text or a unit? That might be where you're asking them for what they know already, right? It could be a lecture, but it also could be interactive. Like, what do you know about this? What, what, ex what examples can you find of X, Y, Z? Do you want them to interact with the material that they've already read? Or do you wanna make it be something that's a final product? And I actually have, I don't have the voice thread because I'm not going to show the ones that my students have made, but I have students create a slide that goes into a Google slideshow, and then I upload that Google slideshow to VoiceThread. I have students go on and make comments about their own slide, and then we go back and we interact. And it's a wonderful way to do a wiki where students are actually showcasing what they know and sharing it with the audience online, but they're not taking hours and hours to do it. And then when do you want to have students participate? And part of it connects with this, but part of it is a little bit different. Do you want it to be prior to introducing the content, in the middle of the process, or towards the end? What types of slides do you want to include? Do you want to just include text slides, still visuals, videos, links to other videos on YouTube? Hey there. Hey, Jen. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. We have oh. a question for you. Yes. And this is from Martha. It says, you said we could create as many as 25 slides. But you what can... about the VT time? Is there a time limit 
um, is there a time a VT, a VT could be? Are VT saved on Canvas or our desktop? Thanks. Okay, so when I said 25 slides, I was just being facetious. You could probably make your slideshows really, really long if you wanted to, like really long. And I'm going to showcase a slideshow that in, in uh, Canvas where I told students this whole thing is going to take you about two and a half hours and I'm taking them into the library and having them practice library research and teaching them how to do library research. And so I told them you don't necessarily need to do this at once, but what you could do on VoiceThread is I always recommend to students, what I'd like to see is, and, and we're going to talk about this more next week, actually, that's part of the, the topic, is about the logistics for students and the logistics for you for grading and everything. So what I tend to have students do is I, I tell them really what I'd like you to do is, is aim for about, you know, 30 seconds to a minute and a half comment. And then students tend to stick to that. Now you could put in Canvas on, excuse me, in VoiceThread, excuse me, in the options, playback settings, there is an option where you can limit each comment to whatever it is you want. But I've never had a problem with a student going on and on and on, but I will tell you that if I did, if I did, what would it really truthfully happen is that students would start to listen to that student and then they would stop and then they could go to the next comment and the student would be none the wiser, right? So it, 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 that's the beauty of it. So it's like, just like when you're looking at content, you start to watch a video and you're like, uh, I don't think I like that one. I'm gonna look at this other one and you stop and you, you move on. But I've not really had a problem with students you know, over speaking, but I try to model what I'm looking for. Now, uh, one of the things that I did not show you in VoiceThread, but I'm probably going to create a VoiceThread where you can see it, is you can actually doodle on the VoiceThread. Uh, but I have to show you a video because we're on Zoom. But where it is where you choose a little colored pencil, and if you watch my little cursor here, you could mark up a page. I've had students mark up and annotate a page. And what's great is Anna, for example, could annotate a page when she's speaking and then it goes away. And then Andrew could go back and annotate the page and then it disappears. So it, it's wonderful for actually pointing out and using a cursor to try and point to things point to things, underline things, put a square around things. So that's a wonderful use of it as well. Is that, is that good, Martha? You can do a thumbs up if you, I see you. <laughs> I actually also had a question about um, saving the, um, the voice thread because yeah. I'm wondering if it saves automatically to Canvas or is it gonna be saved on my desktop only because I'm saving so much with lessons that um, I'm a little worried about running out of space on my hard drive. It will not go on your hard, hard drive at all. It'll either say, it'll save in VoiceThread. It'll be in the cloud. Now, if you are creating PowerPoints and you're uploading them, those PowerPoints are gonna stay unless you get rid of them. That's why I, I like to use uh, Google Slides because that's all in the cloud, so. Um, and then the question is, what types of responses do you want? And I'm, I will show you the voice thread that I have a little um, banner that I put, and I'm gonna start using this more often when I need to, which it says response slide, so students know. So if I wanna inter, intersperse a lecture slide that I don't need them to respond to, but then I want a response slide, and then a lecture slide, lecture slide, response slide, I can do that very easily, which is also an, another wonderful thing for VoiceThread. And then down the line, you, you will wanna think about how many VoiceThread assignments do you want your students to participate in during the semester and how you will want to space them out, how you're gonna to wanna to use the tool so that students are used to it. I wouldn't recommend just doing a single voice thread ever and having them learn the tool and then not ever use it again. So a rule of thumb that I have for myself as an online educator, whenever I'm using a tool outside of Canvas, is that I like them to use the tool, generally speaking, 
for every single unit I create. So if, you know, at least. So most of my students who are online usually participate in four to five different voice threads. That's, you know, but you could even, but that's participate. There's other lecture voice threads as well. And you might have students who need the extra help and not everybody does. And so you could create a lecture voice thread and send it out in an announcement and say, if you need a little extra help with X, Y, Z, take, have a look at this voice thread. It can support you with it, but it's not worth a grade. It's just an opportunity for students to get a little extra support. All right. And like I said, we're gonna talk about the more of the pedagogy next week. Okay, so I also have a beautiful little video here that was created by Michelle Pukansky Brock about using VoiceThread. She was the one that taught me VoiceThread all those years ago. I have this for you if you would like to take a look later on. All right, so now we're gonna get to the place that I'm a little less comfortable with, but I'm gonna be okay with my discomfort, just like my students are. And that is using VoiceThread in Canvas because this is the first time that I'm ever using it in Canvas, okay? So we are actually doing really well. I'm gonna actually pause this here and I wanna show you a couple of other sample VoiceThreads and then come back to this because we're, we're doing well on time. So I'm gonna put a pin in this and then I'm gonna come back. Okay, so I have VoiceThread. I've invited everybody. There's a couple of you who've already taken a look. I'm actually going to have a place for you to turn in your voice threads if you're able to. If not, maybe a link to it. We'll see because of how VoiceThread is working through Canvas. So I have just a single module right now where you see the VoiceThread for Educators slideshow. I have a link to VoiceThread tutorials that goes directly to the VoiceThread site. And if you need help with a very specific, discrete aspect of it, you can. And what's wonderful about VoiceThread is you can go there and you can browse. And so I'm an English teacher, but most of you are not English teachers. So you could actually look up VoiceThread for a specific uh, discipline if you would like to, to get some ideas. So here are the samples. And I have some samples for mini lectures, samples for check-in, uh, samples for introduction to a text or a unit. In fact, this sample, the Holocaust setting the stage is a really long one. It was the first one I ever created. So if you look at it, it's gonna look a little bit old fashioned, but it's still one of my favorite voice threads. I'm introducing them to the Holocaust. I have a sample for uh, inter interacting with the material, and then I just have a little sample wiki slideshow, which is very sim simplistic, where I have an opening slide, I have the directions, and then I have a bunch of, of blank slides for students to create their slides so that I can then put it in VoiceThread. So the one that I would like to take us to, if I'm able to, is the sample nuts and bolts of library research, because what it does is that it actually is part lecture, part response. But I'm not sure it's gonna let me because this was made with my other account. All right. Let's see. Greeting. Nope. Paused us. Whoops, excuse me, everybody. This actually, I guess I am at, able to get to it. I, I hit something, I was trying to, to make it bigger. There we go, well, we'll see. Nope, I love it. It's still small. Nope, it's thinking about it. All right, so this is my voice thread. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna kind of get rid of us just for a moment, just so I can go on here. And I will show you right here, this, this is my long voice thread. And there are, well, let's 
trying to make us a little bit smaller and then I ended up causing an issue. Okay, let's do this again. All right, so there are several slides. Some of them are videos. Some of them are screenshots. And what's great again is that I can move everything around. And I'm gonna go to, let's see. Wanting to go to comment and it's not allowing me to. Excuse me. I'm going to keep it small because every single time I've tried to make it big, it didn't let me. So I will bring us back. All right. This is embedded, but you could actually make the voice thread so that it is full size like you saw. So I'm going to start the voice thread. If it allows me to. Greetings, everyone. Okay, so this is the nuts and bolts of research. I'm going to go ahead. I give my students the purpose and tasks of what they're to do. I want them to learn about finding valid and uh, reliable sources from the library. And don't worry, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I just want to show a few. I want them to practice finding the sources for a particular writing project. And then I want to reflect and share so that they can share what they're doing, what has worked, what hasn't worked. And it says when you see response slide, please make an initial post and then respond to another peer. And what I would do is give them a certain amount of time. Please have the first response by this date, have a response back in another date. I'm explaining to them how VoiceThread works. I'm asking them to keep at least three tabs open. And then I have the example here of a response slide, which I was telling you about before. So be before we begin, share what you know. What do you know about research from previous classes? How do you already look up research in your daily lives? Share two to three tips. I have another response slide. Keep Keep your assignment handy. What's the purpose? What's the audience? This is for their writing assignment. And so we go on and on with every little response slide. I'm going to go forward. Here is called going down the rabbit hole. And I'm sharing with them about what research really looks like. And, and a lot of people have used Alice in Wonderland where you, you know, the analogy where you start to look at something and then you look at something else and then you look at something else you weren't thinking about and then you finally get into this place you never thought you were supposed to even be there. And what's great about that as a student and as a, as a scholar is that, that's in the, that those are the best times to learn. So I'm trying to introduce them and encourage them to not be afraid of that, not have to have the right answer or find the right source right away, et cetera. So I have all these, I have these slides and again, you'll have an opportunity to take a look at them. And when you're off Zoom, you'll be able to make it bigger. You can look at it in another place. And if you can't, you can let me know that it only is staying small for you. And if it is, I'll put a link into it as well, because then you can look at it, look at it outside of Canvas. And so this, again, uh, going Martha, this one's 37 slides. Okay, not all my voice threads are 37 slides. The shortest voice thread I have is a single slide. The longest voice thread I have is probably this one and maybe the Holocaust one. They're normally not this long, but I'm very open with sharing with them. So if I were gonna put this in an assignment, I would say within the assignment, this particular voice thread is a really long one. You may wanna start it and give yourself a certain amount of time to work and then give yourself permission to stop. Make sure you note which slide you're on so that you can go back to that slide and, and keep going, okay? So I have all of these slides for you to take a look at, excuse me, all of these voice threads for you to take a look at to give you samples of what a voice thread can look like. I wanna look at one more 
And then I would like to open it up for just a couple of minutes to see if there are anything, if there's anything in particular, any questions you have about VoiceThread before we go to VoiceThread in Canvas. So here's a little mid-semester check-in. Hey everyone, welcome to our mid-semester check-in. This is an opportunity for you to share how you're doing and what you plan on doing to help support your own growth for the rest of the semester. Thank you. Now, as a student can turn off their closed captioning as well. Captions are optional. So I have, I'm asking them what's working for them so far. You know, this is just kind of getting some feedback so that I can improve my teaching. What do you think you are doing well? What is helping you in class? I give them a little video called the learning pit and I have a little comment about the video. I don't know if you've ever seen the learning pit, but I recommend you take a look at it. If you've never seen it before, I give them a little visual about what it means to learn. I'm asking them what they can improve upon. What are they gonna do for the second semester, improve upon their study habits, asking for help, or being uncomfortable with not knowing? And I will tell you a lot of my students, I tend to teach teacher track classes, so I'm always thinking about pedagogy when I'm, when I'm creating these things. And then share something you plan to do to reward yourself for a job well done. So what are you gonna do after this semester is over? So students were really excited actually to participate in this, especially I had it created so after spring break, but we had that week to get ready to go online. I actually sent them a little announcement saying, you know, you're going to have this extra week off, but I really want to know what's going on with you. And they all got on right away and responded with this voice thread. They were very, very excited to do so. All right. So before I go into Canvas and and voice thread does anyone have any questions specifically just about voice thread what it can do questions about using using it thoughts and please go ahead and unmute yourself to speak you don't have to speak in the chat I have a quick question for you. Um, you mentioned that you were paying $100, so I, I'm not sure, was that because you had um, an account before we put it on Canvas, or oh, yes. does that provide yes. more tools, or? No, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, the only thing that it provides is it's, it's just easier for me to personally use it, because that's what I'm used to, mm -hmm. but yes, I, I pay $100 per year for my account, this account is temporary for a single class. That's what the CTX, like people had to sign up. They, it's only for a certain number of teachers. And we're trying to figure out whether or not uh, we should be paying for VoiceThread for the entire school. It's kind of like with Camtasia, the same sort mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Should we pay for this license for the entire school or should we you know, not use this and we can use something else? Regardless of what Cerritos ends up deciding to do with Canvas, with VoiceThread within Canvas, I am going to keep my paid for account. I really, and I was, and next week I'm, I'm probably going to have you just see my paid for account so mm -hmm. I could show you some bigger VoiceThread so I don't have that issue because I'm only able to sign into one account. That's why I was saying that I use Google and Firefox at the same time. I will use Google for one account and I will use Firefox for the other. Um, but I really like VoiceThread. So I, I don't know what Cerritos is going to do. I think this is their time to investigate. But I am right. all into using this particular tool. So I, have right. a, I have a question. Yes. Can know. you tell me you who doing? you are? Because I, I cannot see everybody who's speaking. If you could just say this is. Oh, Angie Crumb. Hi, Angie Crumb. I went to the, um, I went to Dorsey High School. Do you remember me now? 
Oh, yes. Well, I was there years, years yes. ago. Yes, 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 yes. Hi, Angie. Yeah. And now that I see your face, I yes, of course. Hi. Okay. So, um, okay, so once VoiceThread was given our free accounts, and um, and what if I, I can't remember if I signed up using Cerritos.edu just to kind of like play around with it. So right. what happens if you use the Cerritos email? That, that is a good me? question, Angie. And I, I know, I remember, right, that is a good question. That is yeah. where I would yeah. contact VoiceThread and I would ask. M Monique, were you speaking? No, it's, this is Anna, I'm sorry, I did the same thing. Uh -huh. I tried to activate it the, la the end of last semester thinking everybody had it, where I only had it on one campus. And I created an account with Cerritos and while the training's been going on, I was able to log in through Canvas using that email and password. Thank you, Anna. It I does work. Thank you. Thank you, yay. Okay, good. Awesome, so Angie, you got your answer. You're able to use it. And if, if the thing is, is if so now Anna, did you so you you took advantage of the free no. usage or you I, paid for it using no. Cerritos? No, I I teach somewhere where they pay for it, and I oh. used it to have the students do their final presentations, and I loved it. I didn't realize I could do it too at the time. I was just muddling around, and I wanted that sense of community where they do their presentations and can comment on each other's work. And that's what I used it for. And I tried to use it here for the same thing. And I signed up for an account that was not free, it was not available. Um, it, it wanted all sorts of password information that I couldn't get, uh, but it kept my information. And so when I logged on through Canvas for the class that's been activated right now, right. Um, it said, well, where's your password? And I just put in the same password and it worked just fine. Okay. All right. I know that's what I, there's, there's a few things and Anna, I'm going to ask you actually, if I have a little few issues here, you've had a little bit more experience with Canvas and VoiceThread than I have for sure, because I've not used it with my students. So if I'm saying something incorrectly, I'm going to ask you to please stop and correct me. Okay. Because there's a few things in the instructions that I was like, this is a little bit clunky. It so is. It, it, but it's not clunky if you have your own paid for account. You see what? I, so, but you know, so that's the thing that's a little bit confusing because when I have my paid for account, I would just link it. You know, get a link. I'd share it with the class. They participate. I'd make them go back to Canvas and say the dates that they did, just in a little assignment. That's the extra step that I had to take for the paid for account that you don't have to take for Canvas. So please feel free to stop me if I say something wrong in the next couple of minutes. Okay. So that's perfect, thank you. Did anyone else have any questions specifically about VoiceThread? I just wanted to bring something up. Um, actually, VoiceThread recommends to create your um, thread through their account and then integrate it into Canvas. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. That is correct. 100%. That's why if you see here, that's why I'm kind of glad that it did it. It, my account right here that I'm using is my Cerritos college account, which you can see right here. I don't use my Cerritos college account. So it opened up for me. So yes, but you can start it definitely through campus for sure. Okay, so I am actually gonna go back to the, to the slideshow here. And so we have using VoiceThread in Canvas, okay? There's a helpful video here about using VoiceThread in Canvas. It's about six minutes long. Uh, for someone like me, I, I was like watching it going, oh my gosh, but it was very important to watch because it actually helped me. And there are very specific directions here to follow which are also included in this link so you're going to want to actually watch the video even though I'm going to show you what to do and what canvas requires you to do and again Anna you can correct me if I'm wrong is it requires you actually to add the canvas tool to the modules 
and then it requires you to add it to the assignments, which I don't know why you'd have to do it to the modules. And that's a question I'm going to be asking VoiceThread, but I can show you how to do that. Yes, Anna. I, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. All I did, and I've done it right here on my Cerritos course while, you know, earlier while you were talking, is um, I create a new assignment, I go to external tool, I click on okay. find, I find VoiceThread, and it activates, it asks for my password. I use the old password. Right. Um, hopefully Angie's will work too. And um, I was in, no problem. Well, okay, all right. I, I will tell you that I actually created a new module. And I actually had to add it. I had to add it to my module first because it would no, it, there was no choice for me. So if that works for you, Anna, great. If and I actually recommend you try this part first, and I will show you what that looks like. In fact, I even have some visuals here about adding the external tool to the module first. If and I will show you how to do that in a minute. If if you have can skip this step and then go directly to slide number 13. And if you're writing down notes, write down notes. Say try slide 13 first. And if it works, then skip slide, sw slide 12. So that's good to hear because it didn't work for me. Yeah. Okay, so. And can I say something else to Janet? That yes. I think they give you options for both the modules and the assignment because all of the tools are integrated within each other. So sometimes people just directly build their modules through the modules tool versus creating the assignments first and then integrating it into modules. Okay, thank you for that information. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> yes, yes. And I will, I'm gonna show this to you, this little, in case you don't know, and I'm gonna show you on my, little sample summer class. I'm not teaching in the summer, which has been great yet. I'm gonna be in the second session. And what's great about that is I've been able to use my Canvas shell to just kind of play around with the tool so that I can show all of you. So, and that's separate from our voice thread shell here. So this little V, in case you do not know, are the external tools and you're gonna choose voice thread. So I'm gonna to go to my class and I'm gonna make, make us small again, excuse me. And I have assignments here, and I wanna show you, I'm gonna open up the assignment that I made. And I did it where I went through the module and it gave me this, and then I went through the assignment. So hopefully it'll work directly through the assignment. I did not write anything here for instructions, However, you're going to want to do that. So if you, you know, I keep the instructions within the voice thread itself, but what I would do, for example, for August Wilson's voice thread, where I was sharing with you that there are three videos that students have made that I had them look at in order to participate, I would put that link to my Google uh, page with the links of those videos right here. So in my assignment, all you're seeing is the actual voice thread that is integrated, but you can make the choice to add other wording here. And the important part is that for the submission type, this is what's important, is that you go to that external tool and you choose voice thread and then you'll be able to create it. So I am going to go to a new assignment and show you that as well. So I'm in assignments as opposed to modules. And again, please put down the note that, you know, you, you may have to put it in modules, you don't. I was trying to do it from the module. I'm gonna add an assignment and I'm going to put light bulb slide. This is not what I would really call it, but I'm just sharing that with you. You could go here, there's more external tools, but you're really gonna wanna go, this is right here, the external tool. So I'm gonna go to external tool, I'm gonna find, and the reason why I was able to go to external tool is because I already put it in. I'm gonna scroll down to voice thread. And then this is what you're gonna see, hopefully, in a second. 
where you have the voice thread set up, I'm going to go to Assignment Builder. And if you want to do one where you want students to submit a comment, you're going to hit this. If you want to just include uh, lecture materials, you're going to hit this. So I'm going to hit Submit a Comment. And I have this light bulb assignment here already. OK. I am just going to call it light bulb just to make it quick. I am going to have the number of, of comments that I want them to make. And then I'm going to create the assignment. And I'm going to save and continue. And that should be good here. So hopefully it may not have been because I didn't hit select. Yeah, you want to make sure you hit select. Yes, which is good. This is a good, a good, a good mistake to, to do because then I can go back and do it again. I've been playing with this quite a bit here. It's just, it, like I said, it's the same tool. It's just very different. Going back to assignment builder, submit a comment. I'm choosing light bulb. I'm calling it light bulb. I'm going to make them do two comments. I'm going to hit create assignment. You can choose to moderate comments, but I've never had a problem with a student with comments, although you can have that, com that conversation about what you expect and respect and all of that. Oh, it's going back again. Whoops. Okay, now I'm going to select. All right. Okay. I'll put it here as well. That's, that's where I think it's kind of clunky. I should only have to choose one place to put it. Monique, do you know why this is? Um, no, I don't. It could, it could just be because how it's a third party application and um, that's how they just made it work in the back end. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna stop it here because it's gonna continue to do this little gear sort of thing, but it's here as well. I'm going to hit save and I want to see, I'm going to make it worth 20 points. I want to see what it looks like. And it just looks like this. That's what I'm saying. You need to be able to see it. I guess you'll be directed. Oh, here it is. I guess if I wanted to add some more information. So here's the light bulb slide. Anna, are you used to seeing this like this? Oh. Yeah, yes. Um, and once they start populating it, you can see submitted and not submitted. But in order for the students to see other students' submissions, they had to go back into their creation and click on edit, and then they could see the list. It was just this weird glitch. Um, so there was that. I don't know if that's still happening or if they fixed it, but um, for students. Do you think, Anna, you can send me, I know that's going to sound weird, but can you send me a quick email about, the, about that? Because if that's what this does, it's kind of frustrating. <laughs> I prefer the free account. They have to go, they have to go back to be able to do it because the li like on the create assignments where they're the ones producing the content. Well, oh, only when they're producing the content. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. And they can't see anyone else's until they edit their own. Right. But that's, but this is my created assignment. So, so I didn't do this kind, but I could see all of them, but they couldn't see. So that was annoying. Okay. So here's my, here's my little light bulb assignment that I'll share with you. Hello and welcome. I would like to invite you to think about something that you really struggled to learn, but really wanted to learn it. Something that took you a while to learn and then one day something seemed to snap into place like a puzzle piece and you learned it. Can you share about what it was you learned, what you struggled with, and what you ended up having to do to ultimately learn it.
Thank you. Okay, so if I made a voice thread and I did not want to wait for captions, captions tend to take about four days for, for them to come out. And at, unless you have a student who needs captioning, if you have a student who needs captioning, then I would encourage students to do the text. But if you have a, don't have students that need captioning, then they don't have to caption their own responses, but you should be requesting those captions. But let's say you make a voice thread and you want to use it that day. What I do is I create the text version. So I, it's the same sort of comment. The same ideas are right in here of what I want to ask them to do. So that's, that's kind of a quick workaround while, you know, if we have to wait for captions. Okay. So you can go ahead and do that. And what's great is that when you make a comment, like the, when I'm doing a comment, when I'm doing a lecture, I'm able to make a comment, not like it, dump the comment. Sometimes I get the comment good the very first time, and then other times I do not, okay? So I want to encourage you as we move on to the next week, here through this week as you practice making a voice thread. And you know, I, I, it'd be lovely if you had it available so that we can take a look at your voice thread. If you can't, you know, I'll, I'll be able to sh have everybody share their screen. I can easily do that. I would like to invite you though, while you're doing that, just to practice with mine. You can make comments. On this on the slides as you want to just to practice so that you understand how it works okay so um, I wanted to share that and then so again I have the video here specifically I showed you about how to do it and showed you a couple of pictures and choices to make I want to tell you what we're going to focus on next week, and that is going to be on grading, commenting back to students and threading. We talked about that a little bit today, but I want to talk about that a little bit more. Communicate. Oh, is somebody saying something? Yep. So we have a comment. Yes. And it says, this is from Joanne. It says, do students need to have a VoiceThread account in order to make a comment? Okay, if VoiceThread is in Canvas, then no. If VoiceThread is not in Canvas, like I've had it as a tool separately, then yes, they do. But it is free as long as you're able to comment as many VoiceThreads as you want. That's why I'm saying that I am iffy about how much I like VoiceThread integrated into canvas because i think they need to do a better job and i am going to be giving them some very specific feedback for that uh very specific feedback for that but i love voice thread and to me it's worth a hundred dollars a year that's you know, like i said out of any tool that i would pay for that's the one that is the one and only and it's easy enough to do a workaround. That's why I'm going to show you, we're going to be talking about how to use it in Canvas, but I'm also going to show you how to do the workaround if you decide that you want to use VoiceThread, but you don't like the Canvas version. Okay. I and, think that's, yeah. and thank you. Thank you, Janet, for saying that, because um, if we do bring back uh, VoiceThread, that would be something that we would consider, because we do have an option of what type of um, account that we want to purchase. Good. And the reason why we went with, with integrating with Canvas is because we thought it would be more helpful because it includes the grading aspect of it. Yeah, I, there's just such an easy workaround. And if Anna is correct about students cannot see each other's comments without. So they're, they're not the comments, they can see comments. They couldn't see anyone else's voice thread, just their own. Oh, okay. Well, that's different. That is a different thing. So we're going to, so, so before I make my final, like what I think, uh, Monique, I want to, I want to first, I, I want to give myself some time to be super frustrated with this and see if it's worth it. 
but I, I will tell you that I'm going to be sharing with you next week both ways so that if we end up, I, I, voice thread is great. I hope Scooter pays for it because if they do, I will be jumping up and down even though I just paid for my renewal and it won't make a difference to me, you know, for next year. But I love it because it is so easy to do a quick little workaround and you can share the voice threads with people in your department and, you know, you can share here, here, here's a slideshow. You just, you know, you go ahead and, and comment on it, you know, make it your own and we could share it and really come up with a rich uh, content with all these voice threads. So I'm glad you mentioned that, Monique. I'm glad that there's a different way to purchase it, but I want to play around with it first. But Anyway, so next week, okay. I know we're at 302. I will be done in two seconds. So we're gonna do- Okay, we have a couple more, we have a couple more questions. Okay, So All right. another, we have another question from Martha. It says, um, where do we post the voice, the voice thread we create? Okay, so Martha, this is, this is the problem. I think what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna be asking you to, I'm gonna be, Ask, I'm going to probably put you in groups and I'm going to probably make you co-hosts where you can share your screens because VoiceThread is only in Canvas, in the actual Canvas class that you have, a single one for the summer. I don't know that you're going to be able to turn it in. I'm not sure yet though. If you're, at, That's one of the things that I need to look for is I need to look for can I share this link because I'm not in your class, so I won't be able to exactly see it necessarily. So I need to figure that out. We may be sharing it within our session. Maybe, you know, sharing maybe a slide piece or breaking down the groups and then sharing. So we'll, we'll figure that, we'll figure that out. Um, there's no place for you to turn it in. I just want you to have at least one ready or, or make, make whatever you want and then choose the best one to, sh you know, and have it ready to showcase in a tab in your computer. And I will share with you that I always make my computer screen here smaller, when, especially when I am somebody who's in another Zoom meeting and you can make the Zoom meeting closer and you can toggle back and forth between actually being on Google Chrome and on the, the um, meeting, the Zoom meeting itself, okay? And then we have a question from Rachel. It says, with the questions regarding VoiceThread in Canvas, can we do a test run where we are able to comment on your VoiceThread? Yes, please do. That's exactly what I put those there for. And in fact, let me share one other thing. This is, I, I'm thinking now back to Martha's thing. Please go ahead and practice on my samples. That's all they're there for. They're there for samples for you, for you eight to 10 people. So yes, play around, do whatever you want. Practice doing a video, practice doing a text, practice doing audio. The other option for actually sharing voice threads, just so you know, you might wanna do this, is if you sign up for VoiceThread, okay, you can have a free account and create up to three voice threads. So you could do a PowerPoint or a Google slideshow and put them up into both a short one and you can comment on it on your canvas shell and you can also comment on it for the free one and the free one you can absolutely very easily turn that into me if you're willing to do it it's not a have to it's just an encouragement and then i could take a look and, and give you some feedback if you want it you know but i'm sure they'll be great I mean, like I said, the, the, when you're really sitting down and trying to figure out what you're going to put into a voice thread, usually the, those first and second ones are fantastic. And please look at mine. Please steal the ideas from mine. You are welcome to. We're all colleagues here. Do those. Great. Okay. And now we have a question from Anna, and it says, could we have a voice thread assignment in the Canvas shell so that we can test if we can see each other's creation? Yes, what I'm gonna do, I put you in as students so that you could submit, although I could, I could put you in as teachers too very easily. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create, in just a minute, as soon as we get off, I'm gonna create a discussion form. 
and you can put the link for your voice thread in the discussion form or you can embed it it doesn't matter whatever you want to do but yes i will i will make that like asap and if you're able to take a link out and share it with me that would, with the class that would be great did that answer did that answer your question anna okay all right and then one last question from, all right uh, one last question from angie is do we need to meet once a week or how often we're going to meet three times total so we're going to meet we met today that's the first time we're going to meet next week and the reason why we're meeting so soon next week same time wednesday the reason why we're doing that is that i that if you're working on your voice threads right now you're going to have some really specific questions and i want you to write i encourage you to write them down and then we're going to discuss them during the time i mean i have a plan for next week but answering questions is very much a part of it and we can read in the questions they're not necessarily going to be at the end we may, you know and then that way we can really work out those kinks and get, get you started using voice thread yeah and then after that we're going to i'm going to give you two weeks to really create a really good voice thread to share with everybody so it's a three and are we meeting and are we meeting at 2 p.m.? Yes, and if you look up here, this voice thread for educators is here. We're, it, it says the dates, but we're, we're meeting at the same time, 2 p.m. each time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then um, are we gonna use the same link, Janet? Yes, we will use the same exact link, but I will still send it out. I'll probably send it out via announcements on, voice, on our voice thread shell. Here's the link again. That way you have it. But yeah. you have to okay. accept, and I'll make to sure. accept the class first, and then you'll get the announcement. Okay. Go ahead, Mo. All right. And then I'll make sure everyone gets flex credit for attending these meetings as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. So just quickly, we're going we're gonna to talk about grading. And I'm going to talk about grading using both within Canvas, which is, that's obvious, but I'm going to talk, talk to you about the workaround grading that I do, which I'm very happy with. Um, I'm going to talk about commenting back to students and threading. I'm going to talk about some communication guidelines and length of time to leave a voice thread open and how to encourage students to get active and that sort of thing. That some of the nuances of voice thread, you know, I just showed you voice thread, but there are really some nuances and choices and things that you can do to make your voice threads even better for your students. Um, and then creating I talked about creating the templates and the masters but I'll probably remind you this this is like really a huge time saver that you have that template and then you make that copy and I'll, I'll share that with you and then I will answer any questions you have but like I said after Google this is it <laughs> this is like my favorite outside of canvas school um, but I'm going to be but between now and next week. I'm also going to be playing with voice thread within canvas even more. I've been doing it off and on for the last few days and have been getting frustrated and I don't want the use of canvas within voice thread the clunkiness of it to cause you not to like voice thread, <laughs> please, please, because it's so it, you know, that's just one workaround. So I'm so happy to hear that Mo. I'm I yeah, well, we'll see. And we'll see what we all think. Yeah. All right. And I'll contact the the customer support to see if um, the pro account is included in our um, our agreement. Okay, that would be fantastic. I would really appreciate that very much um, because yeah, I just want this to be. Easy. This should be very. It's very intuitive. You just upload your slides. You add your your other videos or anything you want to do you make your comments you ask for the captions and you publish it that's it it shouldn't take very long that light bulb uh, voice thread took me five minutes to create and make that was it the other one the library one which you can look at that took me a long time but that you know that was different right so you know but students really like it they like coming back commenting back and forth with one another all right, so what I'm going to do is right after I get off now, which we'll, we'll get off unless there's any other questions, I am going to create the discussion forum for you guys to include links to your voice threads. And again, it's not on here, but I highly recommend that you 
get a free VoiceThread account just to practice on there if you're having a hard time using it within Canvas. And then just as a reminder that this right here is the link to the video and these instructions here, okay? All right, because yeah, I don't want to lose you to hating VoiceThread because of Canvas. They need to make it better. All right, thank you all for coming. Thank you for your patience. I apologize that some of the things that I wanted us to do, we couldn't, but I, I, I had a feeling we might not be able to due to Zoom. So it was great to see you all today, and I will see you next week on Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank, you thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone.